Hello, I'm John Nardini, and today I'll be talking about using persistent homology for blood vessel images. In these two figures here, we have two images of blood vessels that have developed in response to tumors. And what we, may, uh, what we may observe about these blood vessels is that they have really interesting morphologies, meaning uh, structure and functions to them. For example, on the left, we see that these blood vessels tend to branch out from left to right and uh, form a dense network in uh, this localized area. Whereas on the right, we see that a, a small number of blood vessels appear to be reaching all around the tumor from different types of directions. So our goal for today is to talk about how persistent homology can be used to summarize these types of morphologies that we observe. Now we're gonna keep things simple and we're going to compute persistent homology for simulated mathematical models of blood vessels. And what our mathematical model looks like is as follows. We have individual vessels growing from left to right and they're moving stochastically and they're going to form our final uh, blood vessel image. And a few things that happen during the simulation are we have merging events where two blood vessels merge into just one vessel segment, or we have branching events where one vessel segment branches into two. Now, if we zoomed in on this, on this image from our mathematical model, what we're going to observe is that this, this image is a binary image where the red pixels denote the presence of blood vessels, and the white pixels denote the absence of these blood vessels. And so our goal is to talk about one type of way to compute the persistent homology of these blood vessel images, but note that there are many plausible ways to do this. So first off, let's focus on the homology of an individual image. So what we're going to do is from this binary image, we're going to create a simplicial complex or a collection of simple shapes. And the way that we're going to do this is we're gonna start off with dots, and we're going to place points at the non-zero pixels from our image. Next, we can create the lines in our simplicial complex. And the way in which we're going to do that is we're going to look at the more neighborhood of each, in, each of our points, where the more neighborhood is the eight surrounding pixels. And for any two points that are within each other's more neighborhood, we'll draw a line between them. And now we can continue this process for all of the points in our simplicial complex to create um, all, of the, all of the lines in our simplicial complex. And lastly, we're then going to fill in any triangles that are all within each other's more neighborhood. So we put these triangles between any of those three such points. And now that we've created our simplicial complex here, it's a combination of points, lines, and triangles. We can then compute its homology. So for example, this binary image we see has two connected components, one in the top, one in the bottom and one loop, not zero loops, with a loop given here. Next, we can talk about persistent homology for these blood vessel images, which is a collection of nested uh, binary images um, given by K1, K2, K3, and K4 here. And we'll talk about how we create this filtration and compute the homology at each individual step. So what we're going to do to compute the persist our first filtration is we're just going to move this, this blue line a few pixels from left to right over our binary image and consider the red pixels that have been crossed so far. So from this, we observe that we have three connected components and zero loops. And next, we can now create our second filtration by moving the line two pixels further. And we now see that two of our connected components have joined together. So we have two total connected components and still no loops. Next, if we move the, the line two more pixels over, we still have two connected components and no loops. But then finally, when we've moved our line eight pixels over in our final step of the filtration, our loop has become filled in here. So we now have one loop in our binary image. So at our end filtration here, we returned to the original homology of the image, but these curves here give us a sense of how the homology changes as we sweep the line from left to right. Now we can use the same idea uh, on this previous blood vessel image that we saw before, where we can move this line from left to right and track the number of connected components. And what we observe is that the number of connected components decreases as we have two blood vessel segments merged together. 
And we simply here only move the line from left to right, but we can also move a line from right to left and only consider topological features to the right of our line. And we'll do that with our orange curve here. So what we observe here is that originally we have no topological feature, uh, no loops, uh, excuse me, no connecting components to the right of our line. But then once we start to cross the lengths of our vessel segments, we have an increase in the number of connected components. And then at branching events, we have our, our, our number of connected components decreases. Now we can use the, what's interesting about these, um, these persistent homology computations is that we can actually use them to distinguish different simulations from each other. But for example, we now have simulations one, two, and three. Simulation on the, on the leftmost has very long, thin networks. And as we saw before, it has small areas where it decreases due to merging events in the simulation. In the middle, we have simulation two, which has very short networks that didn't migrate very far. And so we observed that the number of connected components moving left to right simply flatlines once it's reached, um, once, it, once it's passed each, each image. And on the right, we have a very dense, highly connected network. And so here we see as we move the line from left to right, we see a large degree of connectivity. And so the number of connected components really steadily decreases as we move from left to right. So here's just one way in which we can use persistent homology to characterize these three different simulations from each other. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it.